and the filthiness of Joshua, that he is a sinful man like all the rest of us. And God said, no, put on him new clothing. Put a new turban on his head. Put new clothes on him that are white. He is my child. You cannot accuse him. Satan, I rebuke you, is what God said there in uh, Zechariah 3. Now the fullness of our hope of glory rests not only on the perfect defeat of our adversary, but also on the perfect defense of our advocate. We have an advocate, and that advocate is Jesus Christ. Now verse 34, who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died. But even more, has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God, and He intercedes for us. Now, even if a charge is made, who will condemn? The judge is none other than the Lord Jesus, the very one who, according to verse 1 here in chapter 8 of Romans, makes condemnation impossible. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He died. He arose. He ascended. He intercedes. And this is all for you and I. Now let the adversary make any charge that he will. The perfect answer is the upraised hand, the pierced hand of our intercessor, Jesus Christ. That is all that's needed. The believer is preserved for glory. The Apostle Paul is concluding his argument, displays the finality of our hope for glory, and he declares that nothing absolutely nothing can shake the believer's security. Verses 35 through 37. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or anguish or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Know that all these things, we are more than victorious or we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. In other words, nothing can stifle our relationship with God. Once that relationship is placed there, nothing can come between our relationship with God. Nothing can break that relationship. These seven enemies, affliction, anguish, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, they have been a common foe, more or less, of believers from the earliest days of the church. Paul himself had to face all of them, and he knew them from personal experience, and he knew that none of them could sever a soul from Christ. In complete contrast, they actually drew the believing heart closer to Christ. And that they are allowed by God in no means is proof that God has ceased to love us. Hebrews 12, 6 says, For the Lord disciplines the one He loves. We can look at those as discipline to draw us into a closer relationship with God. But we are more than victorious in Christ. We are more than conquerors. In Christ. Look at verses 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in other words, no fear can hold us. Nothing can hold us. Nothing can come up against us. Now this week, I had uh, these verses and I've been looking at them all week and studying over them and thinking about them and dwelling among them, uh, uh, about them and, and all them. And as I did, and I thought about the difficulties that come in our lives, everyone has them, whether they're perceived or whether they're real, we all have difficulties. But as I would read these verses, it didn't matter how fragile I seemed, just the peace of God and the joy of God would come through. If you, uh, if you ever feel... Uh, that tugging, uh, that, that hurt that comes in our life, the difficulties in our life. Take these scriptures, open them up, and look at them. Dwell on them, think of them, meditate on them. They are powerful, powerful verses. Death, can death separate us from the love of God? Of course not. Death ushers the born-again believer into the very presence of God, as the apostle wrote in Corinthians, that death makes us absent from this body and present with the Lord. Death cannot separate us from God. It ushers us into the very presence of our Lord and our Savior. Can this life separate us from the love of God? Sometimes it seems like it can, doesn't it? It destroys us. It hurts. It damages us. Absolutely not. It cannot separate us from the love of God. Matthew 28, 20, Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. In this life, Jesus is with us. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, even 
in this life. Can angels separate us from God's love? No. Hebrews 1.14 Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation? Angels are there to help us as we are the ones inheriting salvation. They crowd the unseen world to aid us in our journey home. Can rulers or powers separate us? No, for we know that according to Ephesians 6, 12 through 17, that with the whole armor of God, we can put them to flight for the simple fact that Christ finished work. We have that helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We have the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith. We have all the armor of God, and nothing can separate us, not even rulers and powers, from the love of God. Can the things present separate us from the love of God? Of course not, for He is the great I am the one who dwells eternally in the present. Jesus is the great I am. He dwells forever, even in the present. The present cannot separate us from the love of God. Now what about uh, things to come? Can they come between us and the love of God? The answer is still no, because the Lord Jesus is the coming one. And of all the things to come, the supreme and the vital future advent is His. Can life and death separate us from God's love, which is in Christ Jesus. Again, no, for He has plumbed the deepest depths, and He has scaled the highest height, and He is enthroned on the highest pinnacle of glory. Can any created thing come between us and our God? I must again answer with a resounding no. God is the great Creator, and He has created nothing that can separate His children from Himself. So then, whether it be things from experience or being from the realm of the spirits, whether it be matters of time or matters of space, nothing can separate us from God's love. The love that took the initiative in lifting us from the fiery clay, He will one day lift us into the very halls of heaven. Now tell me, what more could you ask for than that? The believers try it the believer's security in Christ, that we are absolutely secure in our Lord. But we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to His purpose. And then, for I am persuaded that nothing can separate us from God's love. What a wonderful, wonderful passage here to speak to our hearts. How often does it seem like, man, where am I with God? What is going on in my life? I feel like I'm separate from God. I feel estranged from Him. But the Bible is clear. If you truly are His child, if you truly are born again, you're trusted in the finished work of Christ, nothing will ever break apart that relationship with God. And that is an awesome ball. I cannot understand how someone can believe in one saved and then be lost. That is so arrogant before God to think that I can save myself. You can't save yourself. Only God can save you because He has called you, He has justified you, He has glorified you. He's done that work. We can't save ourselves. And I know that people think that being lost, being saved when they lost the next is humble. It's not. It's arrogance before God. It's thinking that somehow I can work my way to God. And that is a foolhardy thing. And it's, it's hard to believe that you can be saved and think that way. I believe there are some that are saved and think that way. But it's hard to believe because you must trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. That Jesus came down here. He lived a perfect life that you and I can't live. And you have to be perfect to go to heaven. The wages of sin is death. We're all born in sin. And for sinners, we're all destined for hell. That God reached down in His grace and pulls us and plucks us out of the fire because the Son comes living that perfect life, dying on the cross, being resurrected, ascending into heaven, being alive, King of kings and Lord of lords. And if you trust in Jesus Christ, His finished work, you repent of your sin, you repent of going your own way, and you follow Christ's way, you will be saved. And you're saved for all eternity. Isn't that an awesome thought? Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now I think we have a final song here, a beautiful song, speaking of breathing.